we're going to hear from Philip McLean, who's Head of Capital Planning, NHS Facilities and Scottish Government, who's also my boss, by the way, so we'll clap and everything else. He's not here, though, to actually uh, appreciate that. So he, for personal reasons, unfortunately, has had to withdraw, but I believe has provided a recording of his presentation. So if that could, could start playing, that would be great. Thank you. Hi, uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Philip McLean and I'm the Head of NHS Facilities and Environmental Sustainability Policy at Scottish Government. Uh, I'd like to, to welcome you to the conference today. Um, I think it looks like a, a really interesting agenda with some really good speakers. I have to say that it includes a, a couple of my colleagues, um, Wendy and uh, Alethea, um, but I think it'll be a, I do think it'll be a really interesting day. Uh, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm unable to attend in person. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Paul and his team for bringing this uh, conference to, to Scotland um, for the first time. And um, it's great, it's, it's been held at the, the Edinburgh International Conference Centre. Um, for me, the, the Conference Centre is, is always going to be associated with uh, COVID vaccines. Um, it's where I, I got my, my first vaccine, which was a, a moment of, I think, quite an intense moment of hope in, in a difficult time. Um, it's clearly been a, a real crisis over the last couple of years and particularly challenging for people working in the NHS. Um, but it's a different crisis um, that I'm here today. I'm not here today, but um, I'm, I'm here to, to talk about, um, and that's the climate crisis and uh, what NHS Scotland can do to help address it. Um, I'm going to talk about the, the health impacts of climate change first of all, and then move on to talk about the, what NHS Scotland and the Scottish Government are, are trying to do, um, what our aims and targets are for the NHS. Uh, I'm then going to talk about the main sources of emissions from the NHS and specific actions that are being taken to help reduce those. Climate change poses a catastrophic threat to humanity and the natural systems that underpin our lives. It is obvious that tackling climate change will have a positive impact on human health. That's a quote from Professor Joanna Haig, who uh, co-chaired uh, a report by the Royal Society and the Academy of Medical Sciences on tackling climate change mitigation and human health. And the image there is, is clearly from India. I'm sure you're aware that India's um, been experiencing extreme temperatures uh, over the last couple of months and um, far earlier in the year than it normally would. And this has been testing, uh, in, in the words of, of some of the headlines, the limits of, of human survivability. Now, while the health impacts are obvious, I think it's worthwhile spending a little bit of time to, to look at some of them. They include extreme weather events, uh, heat stress, decreased air quality, um, decreased water quality and quantity, uh, decreased food security and safety. And we're talking about things such as crop failures, as is uh, happening currently in India, and increases in vector-borne diseases. So not only does climate change present direct risks to human health, but it also undermines the, the conditions um, which provide the basis for health. But at the same time, action to reduce climate change uh, can have positive benefits for health, action to, to reduce climate um, emissions, sorry, greenhouse gas emissions and improve the environment. So uh, some examples include improvements to air quality through reduction in the use of fossil fuels, increases in active travel, um, increases in green space, which um, are part of the solutions um, to uh, adapting to the changing climate, um, but are also uh, increasingly understood as benefiting people's health. Well insulated buildings are key to reducing energy consumption, um, but we're also very aware here in Scotland of the number of people who die every year um, from poorly insulated homes as a result of that. Um, an example of environmental action um, that improves health is reducing um, medicinal residues in wastewater as it will help tackle uh, the growth in antimicrobial resistance, uh, one of the main threats to the continued ability to provide healthcare. So, uh, 
now we want to move on to recent events and in COP26. So I'm sure you remember in February and March 2019, there were the, the school climate strikes. And following that in April, the First Minister declared a climate emergency. And then in June, NHS Scotland Chief Executives committed to becoming a net zero health service. And then clearly um, the pandemic uh, happened um, starting in 2020. And the next event, the next major milestone uh, we have in NHS Scotland's response is uh, in November, during COP26, NHS Scotland joined the COP26 health programme, which I'll talk about in a little bit more detail shortly. At the same time, a policy for NHS Scotland on the climate emergency and sustainable development was published, setting out our aims and targets, and a draft strategy. It was also published, setting out our proposals for action to meet those aims and targets. So the COP26 health programme was an initiative by the UK government, the World Health Organisation and Healthcare Without Harm, which is an international NGO. Health systems are estimated to contribute 4.4% of global emissions, which is a I think you'll agree, a, a fairly chunky amount. And shortly before COP26, over 200 health journals published a joint editorial calling for emergency action to limit global temperature increases, restore biodiversity and protect health in recognition of the fact that the climate crisis is also a public health crisis. Now, as part of the COP26 health programme, 47 countries pledged to develop climate resilient, sustainable, low carbon health systems. Um, all the health services in the UK signed up. And for me, this is an important point because um, it can be difficult sometimes to see how our actions um, can add up to effective action to address what is a global problem. But people working in NHS Scotland to, to reduce emissions, to improve its environmental sustainability, are now part of an international alliance of health services who are all working to do the same thing. And there's opportunities for uh, what's been done in Scotland to be shared with other countries and likewise uh, for us to learn from what's happening elsewhere. So what are we trying to achieve uh, for NHS Scotland? So we have six sustainability aims. The first is contribute to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. That's a long-standing policy aim. Those goals are a mix of environmental and social aims. It's all about meeting the needs of uh, humanity uh, within environmental limits so that we do not prejudice the ability of future generations to meet their needs. Our second aim is to become a net zero health service by 2040 or earlier. The third relates to climate adaptation, ensuring that NHS Scotland is resilient to the impacts of a changing climate. Fourthly, we want to create a culture of stewardship where resources are responsibly used to provide environmentally sustainable health care. Fifthly, we want to form part of the circular economy. We want to move away from an economic model where resources are extracted, they're used to manufacture goods, and then those goods are used and thrown away. We want to be part of a model where um, both goods and materials are kept in use, and at the end of their uh, useful life, they are recycled. And sixthly, we want to increase our contribution to tackling the ecological emergency and restoring biodiversity. Um, because while I'm focusing on the climate crisis today, that's one element in a wider environmental crisis affecting uh, humanity and the planet. And the picture on the slide here is of the Balfour Hospital up in Orkney, which is the first all electric hospital uh, to be developed uh, and built in Scotland, as hopefully as the forerunner of what health facilities will be like in the future. So we've got a number of very specific targets. By 2025, we're aiming to have no fossil fueled cars or light commercial vehicles in the fleet, the NHS fleet. We want a 75% reduction in emissions compared to our 1990 baseline. By 2030, uh, we intend to no longer buy large fossil fueled vehicles. By 2038, all publicly owned buildings are to use renewable heat. By 2040, we want a net zero health service. 
and we're aiming by 2045 to have maximised our contribution to reducing wider emissions to net zero, recognising that there are emissions which the NHS can influence but it can't control, for example, uh, emissions from the supply chain. Uh, and the image here is from the, the Larbert Woods at the Fourth uh, Valley Royal Hospital, uh, which is very much um, the, I suppose, the jewel in the crown of the NHS estate uh, when it comes to uh, green space. It's a tremendous asset both for staff, patients, and the community um, living uh, nearby. So we want to cut NHS Scotland's emissions. Um, but what are those emissions? Um, I'm going to talk uh, about the main sources, and these are all measured in tonnes of CO2 equivalent. But it's quite hard to imagine what that looks like. Um, you can see there uh, the volume of one tonne of carbon dioxide is greater than a double decker bus, and it's what's produced by one passenger on a return flight from Paris to New York or driving 3,700 miles in a diesel car. Now, this is what we understand at the moment to be the main sources of NHS emissions. The supply chain is undoubtedly the largest single element of it. These are the emissions from the manufacture of goods. In fact, the, the resources, uh, the extraction of the resources used to manufacture those goods, um, the manufacture of them and the transportation of them. It's very difficult to estimate accurately uh, what those emissions are. Um, there are different approaches. NHS England estimate that their emissions from the supply chain make up over 60% of their carbon footprint. Um, but whether that's accurate or not, it's undoubtedly very, very large. Second uh, source in the table is building energy, which in 2021 was around 430,000 tonnes. Um, the next source is metre dose inhalers which is a, a really surprising source. This is the, um, the propellant in the canisters for inhalers used for the treatment of asthma and COPD, things like Ventolin and Subutamol. And the reason that's so high is because the propellant is actually a greenhouse gas. Um, the most common propellant is 1,430 times more powerful than CO2. And I think that really emphasises that the, um, the response to the climate emergency is not simply a facilities issue. Uh, we need to look at how care is provided as well. Um, another large source that we don't have a figure for yet is staff, patient and visitor travel. What we do know is that transport is the largest uh, source of emissions in Scotland and the cars are the form of transport which contributes the most. Um, so while it's unknown, it's definitely going to be significant. The NHS fleet in Scotland accounts for about 60,000 tonnes. Medical gases such as nitrous oxide uh, account for around 26,000 tonnes and waste we believe is at least 7,000 tonnes, but it could be more. And that's when we talk about waste there, um, that those are the emissions which arise in the treatment and disposal of waste because of course everything that goes into waste it was was made um, it was manufactured and there was emissions there are emissions associated uh, with that in the supply chain so what are we actually trying to do uh, to bring down the emissions from these different sources what are priority actions uh, I'll start with supply chain and waste uh, firstly, we're building sustainability and climate change factors into procurement. So uh, we're no longer going to be looking just at cost and quality. Uh, climate change is going to be one of the factors uh, in deciding what goods to buy. Scottish Government has developed a, a suite of sustainable procurement tools and we're looking uh, at rolling those out across NHS Scotland. We also want to adopt circular economy principles in our approach to procurement. Um, and we need to win, minimise waste. And that can be through you know, really simple things um, like reducing um, the number of gloves that are used um, to prevent overuse of gloves. Um, 
Another area uh, we're looking at is improving waste segregation, making sure that things go in the right recycling bins. Um, it's actually really important um, and it's one of the most effective ways we have of, uh, of improving environmental sustainability. We know that a lot of waste, particularly clinical waste, um, doesn't end up in the right place. Onto buildings, um, our focus now is on energy efficiency. You won't be surprised to hear that, um, but we're also looking at the on-site generation of renewable electricity, um, solar panels and, and wind turbines. All our new facilities and major refurbishments uh, have to be net zero now, and the uh, Scottish Government is working with the NHS uh, to develop net zero route maps by the end of this year for the existing estate. Inhalers and medical gases um, are a, a large source of emissions, we've already seen, um, and I think they illustrate a point, the point that um, good care is sustainable care, because one of the, the ways we can cut emissions from inhalers is through better management of asthma and COPD, um, which means that people are less reliant and use less short-acting inhalers, um, such as Ventolin. We're also going to support the use of dry powder inhalers, which is a type of inhaler which doesn't use any propellant eh, and is much better for the environment as a result. And we're working to eliminate the use of desflurane, which is the most potent of the anaesthetic gases. And we've established a nitrous oxide mitigation programme eh, to bring down emissions from that source um, as it makes up the largest um, source of anaesthetic gas emissions. My colleague Alifia Chiquera, who's speaking later, is leading on that work. When it comes to travel and the fleet, we want to reduce the need to travel. So that will include uh, reducing the, uh, sorry, that will include increasing remote consultations so that people don't have to travel, it includes flexible working and home working. Um, we also want to enable sustainable travel. Um, such as active travel and public transport, not just for commuting, but also for work purposes. So, for example, there are community nursing teams throughout the UK which have started using e-bikes instead of driving. Um, and we're switching away from fossil fuel vehicles in the fleet. But finally, we also need to change the way we do things. We need to build sustainability into the way we plan, how we make decisions, and the way we, we carry out business. An example of this for me is sustainability and quality improvement. Uh, colleagues at National Education for Scotland are looking at how they can incorporate sustainability uh, into their quality improvement training so that it becomes one of the, the key elements in quality improvement. So we need to move away from sustainability and climate change considerations being seen as an add-on to being part of core business. Um, and finally, I want to end on, a, on an optimistic note. I think it's optimistic. It's a, a quote from the chair of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, Hu Sun Lee, who said last month, we are at a crossroads. Uh, the decisions we make now can secure a livable future. We have the tools and know-how required to limit warming. Um, and I would encourage everyone uh, at the conference um, to get involved in the work that's been carried out in NHS Scotland. At the bottom of the slide is the uh, the link to the NHS Scotland's Sustainability Action website, which has lots of resources uh, that people can look at and use. And um, I hope it uh, will prove helpful to you in getting involved and helping us cut NHS Scotland's greenhouse gas emissions. So thank you very much for your time. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. I'm sure it'll be uh, very interesting.